In this video, we'll demonstrate that eigenvectors corresponding to different eigenvalues are linearly independent. It is not a very complicated proof. We'll need a little bit of induction. So our setup is that we have a linear transformation T. It has some eigenvectors and the corresponding eigenvalues are all different. And we need to prove that the eigenvectors are linearly independent. And once again, our argument will be general. It will apply to all sorts of uh, linear spaces. We're not specifying whether these are geometric vectors or polynomials or vectors from Rn or anything at all. General argument for a general vector space works in all linear spaces. Also works for any finite dimension. So I propose as a warm up to start with just two eigenvectors, E1 and E2, and prove that they are linearly dependent. So let's consider two eigenvectors, E1 and E2. We'll let later augment the set with more eigenvectors. And let's prove that they are linearly independent if they are eigenvectors corresponding to two different eigenvalues. Okay, so let's prove, let's go for a proof by contradiction. Let's assume that they are linearly dependent. Well, for two vectors to be linearly dependent, one would have to be a multiple of the other. So let's write it down and see if we can push it into a contradiction. So if one is a multiple of the other, let's say it's E1 that's multiple of E2. And remember that neither one of these vectors can be the zero vector. Those don't count as eigenvectors. So alpha cannot be zero. That's important. Alpha is not zero. Let's now do the only thing we can do. We have very so few elements. There are very few things we can do. So let's do the one thing we can do, which is apply the linear transformation to this identity. If two vectors are equal, their images must be equal. So let's apply this linear transformation to this identity. And because these are eigenvectors, we know exactly what will, will happen. E1 will become lambda 1 E1. And E2 will become lambda 2 E2. Okay? Now, there are two possibilities. Either lambda 1 is 0 or it's not 0. Let's consider the case of not 0 first. And if it's not 0, we can divide both sides by lambda 1, which I will do in this rather violent fashion. And now we have that E1 equals this multiple of E2, or I should say this multiple of E2. And this multiple is not, once again, alpha, because e lambda 2 does not equal lambda 1. So then, which one is it? Is E1 alpha E2, or is E1 this more complicated multiple of E2? So we have a contradiction, and just to drive this contradiction home, I will subtract one element from the other, one identity from the other. I'll have the zero vector on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, I will have alpha 1 minus lambda 2 divided by lambda 1 e2. And because this coefficient does not equal 0, and partly because lambda 2 does not equal lambda 1, we must conclude that the vector e2 has to be the 0 vector. And then, of course, e1 is the 0 vector. So there are contradictions all over the map. But as we only need one, and that contradiction is that we have to conclude that E2 equals zero, which contradicts the very assumption that these are eigenvectors. Now going half a step back, what if lambda 1 was zero? Well, that would mean right away that E2 is zero, because then E2 equals zero right from this expression, without even subtracting one from the other. That's when lambda 1 was still here. If lambda 1 was still here and lambda 1 was 0, then alpha lambda 2 E2 would equal 0. And because lambda 2 is not 0, because it doesn't equal lambda 1, we'd have to conclude that E2 is 0, and we get the contradiction that way. So that proves it when there are just two vectors. Let's now move on to the general case when there are n vectors. But I don't like proofs with n vectors because you have to write dot, dot, dot. So let's do it with four vectors, and we'll see that the argument works for n vectors anyway. So let's now say we have two more, or n minus two more vectors in the list. And let's once again operate by contradiction. 
assume that they are linearly dependent. That means one is a linear combination of the rest. Let's say it's E1 because it could be any. Let's make an arbitrary choice and say that it's E1 as a linear combination of the other three vectors. So we'll just say that E1 equals alpha 2 E2 plus alpha 3 E3 plus alpha 4 E4. All right, well, and we'll do what we did before, was apply the linear transformation to both sides and divide by lambda 1 on the assumption that it's not zero. And if it is zero, it will be worked in a similar case, in a similar way, I'll leave it up to you. We'll just deal with the case when it's not zero. So there will be three additional terms here, plus alpha three, lambda three, E three, divided by lambda one, and the final term, plus alpha four, I hope it fits, lambda four, E four, even if it doesn't fit, you know exactly what it's saying. Lambda 1. Okay, did it fit? Just barely. Fantastic. And now we'll do the same thing as we did before. We'll subtract one identity from the other and we'll get 0 on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, we'll get a linear combination of vectors E2, E3, and E4 that's guaranteed to be non trivial. Why do we know that it's non trivial? Well, it'll be something like this and None of these can equal each other and some of the alphas here are guaranteed to be non-zero and so this linear combination will be non-trivial and we'll have a non-trivial linear combination of vectors of E2 through E4 that equals zero. That means that our original assumption that these four vectors are linearly dependent leads to the stronger assumption that this subset of these three vectors are linearly dependent. So we'll now use that as our starting point, express one as a linear combination of the rest, and probably con conclude that these two are linearly dependent. And in the case of n vectors, we would start with n, narrow it down to n minus 1, then narrow it down to n minus 2, we'll then continue until we're down to 2, in which case we saw the argument that was our starting argument. And that's the proof. It's essentially a proof by contradiction that uses induction. Just one final note. I think it's clear because I said it in the case of two vectors. But among these coefficients, at least one is not zero. That's because these are eigenvectors. They, none of them can be the zero vector. Those don't count as eigenvectors. Therefore, this cannot be the trivial combination. It has to be a non-trivial combination. And one of the alphas cannot be zero, which ultimately leads to the conclusion that here, one of the coefficients is non-zero. Therefore, the linear combination is non-trivial. So there we go. Eigenvectors corresponding to different eigenvalues are necessarily linearly independent.